do you really expect that by showing a few flat earthers there in fact a 24-hour sun in Antarctica this will end the flat earth debate once and for all do you honestly think that's a possibility there is a contract signed and if they back out they have to reimburse me for what I've paid for them to go just this week a flat earther accused me of being either a pedophile or a human trafficker it's literally insane Today's conversation is with Will Duffy, the creator of The Final Experiment. Who's Will Duffy and what's The Final Experiment, I hear you ask. Good question. Here's what you need to know. During the summer in Antarctica, the sun never sets and there's 24 hours of daylight. To this, flat earthers say, first of all, you can't go to Antarctica because it's guarded by the military and something something Antarctic Treaty. Second of all, there's obviously no 24 hour sun because the earth is flat and that is impossible on a flat earth. And that's when Will Duffy said, Hey, I'll pay for a bunch of us to go to Antarctica to find out. And everyone was like, wait, what? Who are you? I'm Will Duffy, a pastor from Colorado and the creator of The Final Experiment. And now a group of flat and globe earthers are headed to Antarctica this December. Anyway, it's pretty cool. And if you want to follow along, there will be links to Will's website and YouTube channel for The Final Experiment in the description below. As always, if you enjoy these kinds of conversations and want to see more like this, I'd really appreciate it if you could let me know by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. All right, intro over, and now on to my conversation with Will Duffy. What's up, everyone? I'm back, and today I am joined by the man with the plan, Will Duffy. Will, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, uh, glad you reached out and uh, excited to be here. So first question, I, I just want to preface my question by saying I think what you're doing with the final experiment is fantastic. The response so far has been interesting, I love the spirit of it, and most of all, I think it's incredibly generous on your part. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. That said, do you really expect that by showing a few flat earthers, there, in fact, a 24-hour sun in Antarctica, they will then realize that they were wrong about the shape of the Earth this whole time, and in turn, this will end the flat Earth debate once and for all? Do you honestly think that's a possibility? Well, here's the deal. I hope... <laughs> that people are in search of truth. Um, I know that in all walks of life, it can be difficult to find people that are willing to set aside their preconceived ideas, their beliefs, and be willing to admit if they are wrong. Uh, but I am in search uh, of truth, and so I've publicly stated, and I will continue to publicly state, that if there's not a 24-hour sun in Antarctica, that uh, we don't live on a globe, and that the earth is flat. And so I'm hoping the flat earthers who consider themselves truthers are also looking for truth. Fortunately, they've been saying for 10 years that there cannot be a 24 hour sun in Antarctica on a flat earth and that a 24 hour sun in Antarctica would prove the globe. And so final experiment will go ahead and test a couple of things. One is, are they really looking for truth? And the second one is, were they being genuine and sincere when they were saying that for all those years. They do seem to already be backtracking, which is something that I think it was in your reveal video when we first learned it was you behind the final experiment. You actually predicted, hey, it'll be interesting to see which side may start to change what they've said in the past. For instance, if the globe side started to say, oh, hey, yeah, well, there may not necessarily be a 24-hour sun, that would tell you something, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Um, and you are correct. Uh, you know, it's an interesting question because <laughs> uh, I've had so many thoughts ever since I created this and made it public. One of the thoughts was, you know, what if I would have just pretended to be a flat earther <laughs> and created the final experiment with the goal of ending the globe? And uh, I'm just curious what their reaction would have been. Like, would they have been on, would they have jumped on board with me or would they have like, contacted me kind of behind closed doors like will we can't do this we shouldn't do this i don't know we'll never know that's not my style my style is no here's who i am here's the truth let's go figure this out i thought the collaborative nature of tfe was gonna bring them on board and and, and get and get excited but uh, yeah it's interesting once i came out and people knew that i was on the globe side that immediately 
uh, caused a reaction of, well, we can't trust him and the experiment's not valid. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on a second, guys. That, that is the purpose of science. That's the purpose of experimentation is it doesn't matter what my position is. Uh, plus, you know, the vast majority of people on the earth are Globers. And so you're going to have a hard time finding someone to put something on like this because it's not been easy. It's not cheap. Uh, who is necessarily just going to agree with you. And so the goal in the final experiment was no one needs to take my word for anything. No one needs to take anybody's word for anything. We're actually going to go do the experiment. We're going to make it public. We're going to have both sides present to hold each other accountable. And we're just going to see what the results are. I have this exact thing as a question. I was going to and I worded it slightly different because I, I have a feeling that you would never pretend to be a flat earther. It's not who you are and it's not in the spirit of this whole experiment i worded it as if you actually were a flat earther how do you think there this would have went but you've already basically answered that perhaps different but like you said we'll never know but i was wondering the exact same thing will yeah yeah it's a, it's a good question you know if i was a flat earther i think i would still have done the exact same experiment because it's the one that people have come up with that we could do that would be definitive that both sides agree would be definitive uh, but yeah, it would have been fascinating to see how the general flat earth community would have reacted to that. And so I guess we'll just have to wonder. Circling back to the plausibility of any of them actually changing their mind. I mean, of course, there are some flat earthers who have publicly changed their mind about the shape of the earth and come back to the globe side. But when I spoke with MC Toon almost a year ago now, I asked him something along the lines of, can flat earthers minds be changed? And he said, the current generation is basically a lost cause, stating that you could send a flat earther into space, show them the earth out the window, and they still won't be convinced, claiming the windows could be HD computer monitors or they could have been drugged this whole time, etc. I think it's still a win for the final experiment, even if not everyone all of a sudden becomes a globe earther. I think there are a lot of people on the fence that are not as vocal, and this could push them back to the globe side. Yeah, well, here's the deal. I created the final experiment exactly because they were the ones, the flat earthers were the ones saying this would prove it for me. And so I kind of got the idea from them. And so I don't hear flat earthers saying, oh, if you want to prove we live on a globe, just send us to space. You don't hear that very often. True. What you hear flat earthers say is I would never get into a rocket. I would never go to space because it doesn't exist. I don't want to mm -hmm. hit the firmament. And so the whole space idea is a fun one to think about, but it's not one that they have publicly stated would change their mind. And so I chose the one thing that they did say would convince them we live on a globe. And I think that that's kind of in the spirit of TFE, why I chose it. And if they want to back off of that, that's their decision. But I hope they realize Backing off of something that they said would change their mind before we even go is not a good look. We would always hear that you can't even go to Antarctica. It's either guarded by people with guns or the joint militaries of the world. It's, it's a no-go zone. Military ships will turn you around. Have you heard that lately? Is anyone still saying that, saying you won't, be, you won't be able to go, so this whole thing is pointless? Actually, yes. So I hear that weekly from Flat Earthers. Really? Uh, yeah, it's interesting, right? So... They're always making excuses like you can't go to Antarctica or we, we must be going on some sort of government chaperoned trip, which is false. They'll say that we're just going to the Antarctic Peninsula, which is false. They'll say we're going on a cruise, which is false. And so I'm constantly correcting them in what they say. Uh, the most extreme comment, which I hear probably monthly still, is that you cannot go past the 60th uh, south latitude, which again is also not true. Uh, yeah, so the narrative on Antarctica is going to change, and uh, that's a win for the final experiment, which is that we are showing that you can go. Are there rules to go? Yes, there's rules to go anywhere, uh, any country. You, you can't just go climb Mount Everest if you want to. You got to get permission, and uh, there, there's also a cost. <laughs> that uh, comes with going to Antarctica. And so those are hurdles, but they're not giant hurdles. Uh, this idea that there are ships that will turn you away is bogus. Uh, the only example I know of that they do show uh, was has nothing to do with Antarctica. 
Uh, if you go look at the original uh, video, it's uh, in Australia, uh, nowhere near Antarctica. And so, yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're definitely changing the conversation, uh, but it'll take a while to get to everybody who has these beliefs that you can't go. You know, some people will say that wherever you are is not Antarctica, that there will likely be one of the rebuttals. I, I recall Witsit saying to you something along the lines of he would have to sit in the cockpit of the plane the whole ride, just to be sure the plane is traveling as it's claimed. Were you expecting that level of distrust and paranoia? Okay, so I don't recall Witsit saying that. I, I recall Joe Hanvey saying that to me. Uh, you might but, be right. Thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's okay. Uh, but anyway, yeah, no, I was not expecting that. So the first thing I wasn't expecting was a, a claim that we were not in Antarctica. Uh, the reason I wasn't expecting that is because in their own model, in the flat earth model, we only can be in Antarctica. We can't be anywhere else. Why? Well, number one, in the flat earth model and the globe model, during the southern summer, there is extended darkness in the north where the north pole would be including 24-hour darkness if you are far enough north and so if you look at a map pick take your pick a globe map or uh, an ae map a flat earth map take your pick wherever we go is clearly going to be white ice and snow in all directions as far as the eye can see we'll even take a drone and fly it up so you can see further and so where can you go on the entire map of the world, that's only that. And the only other place I can think of would be Greenland, but Greenland is so far north, uh, even in the flat earth model, it would never have a 24 hour sun in December. And so if we did take them to Greenland, uh, the globe side would be shooting ourselves in the foot because there definitely would not be a 24 hour sun on either model. So yeah, it's an interesting one. It seems to me like they're just, they're just coming up with things before they think about it. It's just almost like this shotgun approach of like, well, this, 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 and this. And it's like, wait a minute, did you actually think about those first? Not, not to mention our flight. We will be in the southern tip of South America. We will be almost as far south as you can get. We'll be able to prove that. We'll be there. We'll live stream from there. And so this idea that we would fly somewhere else from the southern tip of South America and end up not in Antarctica is crazy. That flight would be insanely long, would fly over multiple continents. And the reality is as soon as we take off, we're going to be over water and we're going to be over water for a few hours. And then all of a sudden we're going to be over Antarctica. So yeah, the, that, that particular one is no good. And if they want to make that their answer as to we are not in Antarctica, number one, it's not going to hold any water, no pun intended. Number two, they're not going to be able to make it make sense uh, on any particular model because, uh, again, we're going to be monitoring the sun down there. And uh, if they think we're somewhere else, they're going to have to explain that. Yeah, because you're going to, like you said, apply a few hours over water, and it's actually going to be colder where you're going. Like you said, there'll be snow where you're going. So where else could you have went if you would have went north? you wouldn't expect snow and, and cold weather. Are you just relying on that, that logical line of thinking and hope that convinces people that you are in fact in Antarctica or do you have some other strategies to establish that you traveled there? Yeah, I do have a couple other ones. One is gonna be GPS. Uh, we're gonna have a GPS unit for both teams, globe team and flat, flat earth team. And then also we're gonna take some videos uh, out the window, which mm -hmm. will show the direction that we're flying and uh, we'd have to we'll also you know record the time of the flight there's a lot of different things i'm hoping the flight will be trackable on you know websites that track flights all that kind of stuff okay current status update i know you give them pretty regularly but correct me if i'm wrong i mean i know you originally said you were going to pay for one trip fully funded for one globe earther and one flat earther currently there's dave mckeegan jaron as well now with what did i miss how did what's it get a complimentary trip as well yeah so the first person we offered a free trip to was uh, flat earth dave david weiss he turned it down and then it went to jaron next jaron accepted it but he didn't want to go alone with a bunch of globers and so he asked if someone another flat earther could go preferably austin Witsit. and so i agreed 
uh, to do that. So that's how you've got two flat earthers on that side versus one glober. And uh, current numbers actually are four globers are going, but they're either crowdfunding or paying their own way other than McKeegan and actually three flat earthers who uh, two of them are going on my dime and one of them is going uh, via crowdfunding. Is it just four Globers now? I thought the score was eight to three. So the scoreboard is who is who has participated in the experiment itself from the original 24 Flat Earthers and 24 Globe Earthers that I invited. This experiment is going to be worldwide, meaning we're going to need people to do things from where they live and we're going to need people boots on the ground in Antarctica. So we actually have a tab on our website called Antarctica Bound, which has a list of who's actually going to Antarctica. But in terms of participation in the experiment, we've had eight on the globe side and three on the flat earth side participate. But don't you have like MC2 News crowdfunding, I know, and as well as a few others? Who Are you not counting them yet because they're not paid up? Yeah, correct. So Dave McKeegan is paid up and he's going... Uh, Critical Think has he has a YouTube channel. He's paid up. He's going. Uh, Leonard William is just uh, someone from Australia who saw the final experiment. Has always wanted to go to Antarctica. He contacted me and said, "Hey, can I join you guys? I'll pay my own way." And I said, "Absolutely." So then he signed up, and then me. So that's four on the globe side, three on the flat Earth side. I do expect MC Tune to go. So then that would be five on the globe side, actually boots on the ground. So obviously things begin with you making an offer for the all expense pay trip to someone. If they're going to accept it, most likely a verbal acceptance or via email. That's really non-binding. Where does it go from there? And at what point are they, or at any point, are they actually committed one way or another? Yeah, so if someone accepts a, a trip that's being paid for by someone else, the next step is I introduce them to the company we're using to get to Antarctica, Antarctic Logistics and Expeditions, ALE. And then ALE gives them an application to fill out, uh, medical forms to fill out, and they have to fill those out and sign them. And they have to be medically approved to go to Antarctica. There are no hospitals in Antarctica, so they're not going to let people that have serious health issues or serious recent health issues go because if they have a medical emergency, the closest hospital is honestly in South America, which is a four to five hour flight away. Yeah. Uh, once they're medically approved, then they have to, uh, uh, the payment has to be made on their behalf and now they're ready to go. So the whole process takes a couple of weeks in a normal circumstances. Well, what are you now? Uh, less than three months out. And can you tell us where Dave, Jaron and Austin are in the process? Yes, they're all approved and paid for. Oh, they've had their medical mm -hmm. approved. Okay, great. That's cool. right. Do you worry that the flat earthers, since they're not financially invested, might back out right before, mm -hmm. like the last week or the day before? I'm not saying they will, but do you have a backup plan if that were to happen? Okay, so there is a contract signed between me, Dave McKeegan, Jaron, and Austin. And if they back out, they have to reimburse me for what I've paid for them to go. So that's pretty helpful. If they do back out, um, again, hopefully they see how bad that will look uh, in the big scheme of things, right? Imagine having a trip completely paid for for you to go, all eyes are watching to see what happens, and then you just no-show. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's definitely not a good look. And, and the fact that we've got three flat earthers going, if all three of them back out, wow. All that would say is they have a complete fear of what they would find down there. And that would contradict what they've always said about Antarctica, which is it's the most important place anyone can go to discover what there is, the, the nature of our realm, possible other lands, possible other resources. And so, yeah, it would just be a really bad look. And so because of that, I don't think any of them will do that. I think all three of them will show up, and I think they're all excited, and I think they'll all report honestly what we find down there. I don't think they'll back out, but would you still go without them if it was just Globe Earthers? Of course. Yeah. 
I want to compare this changing of opinions and backtracking to the excitement leading up to Bob and Jaron performing their respective experiments in the documentary Behind the Curve. To me, it's obvious those two were confident and excited to demonstrate that the Earth doesn't rotate, and in Jaron's case, that there is no curve. And clearly, they were genuinely shocked when the results didn't match their expectations. Have flat earthers become increasingly cynical over the years? Or maybe it's just the overwhelming confidence of the globe side that's got them shook. Why do you think they were so excited to perform the experiments back then, and that wasn't the case for the final experiment? Yeah, that's a really good question. I don't know a lot about Jaren's experiment other than what's on the documentary, which he, again, claims, and he might be right, probably is, that uh, it was completely doctored and chopped up and edited to make it look like something it wasn't. Bob Nodell, on the other hand, is pretty clear. Um, when they got him on camera saying, we can't let this information, this 15 degrees per hour, we, we can't let that get out, to the public, you know, that's clear he's trying to hide something. So, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah, I just don't know how to answer your question. Um, it could be that they were doing the experiments and they thought, hey, if we're doing an experiment and it doesn't go well, we can just uh, sweep it under the rug. And the yeah. fact that TFE is like, I'm doing it and it's being broadcast to everyone and everyone's talking about it it's a little bit riskier, right? Uh, you, can't, you can't try to pull what Bob Nodell tried to pull, which is like, okay, the results are not what we thought they were gonna be, so we're not gonna tell people. That's not what this is about. This is about transparency. This is about honesty. This is about truth. And so, yeah, whatever happens will be uh, broadcast to the entire world. It will be videotaped. There'll, there'll be eyewitnesses. And uh, again, I, I've made a commitment to the Flat Earth community that if there is no 24-hour sun, if the sun sets, I will blow the lid off this thing. P Flat Earthers have tried to tell me that I'm going to be paid off to lie and all this kind of stuff, and I'm just not going to do that. So, If, <laughs> of course not, but let's say the sun does set now. We, we're expecting Flat Earthers to basically admit the globe is true if it doesn't set. I don't think for a minute that the Globers... If the sun was to set, any of them would become flat earthers. Now, many of them have offered to do this or that. Uh, they've dem demonstrated how confident they are that it's not going to set. But if it did, what do you think the response of the globe side would be? Well, there's a whole list of people on the globe side saying that they'll admit they were wrong. They'll become flat earth. They will denounce the globe. They'll delete their videos. They'll delete their YouTube channels. Unless we're say, unless we're going to say they're all lying, I, I think they'll all do exactly what they said they would do. They may follow through with the promises they make, whether they believe the Earth is flat or not. That's, a, I think, a different question. I personally, I would just say I would think, and I'm just being honest here. So I don't even blame the flat earthers who are going to see the 24-hour sun and not become globers, right? I wouldn't become a flat earther. I would say. Hey guys, we must have messed up here. What's what's what, what did we do wrong? Where are we? Maybe we're in the wrong place. It's the wrong time of year. Like what? What did we do wrong? So, I don't know. I think it's maybe a little unfair to expect any flat earthers to instantly become globe earthers when the sun doesn't set. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I the, the globe model is very specific, and it's very precise. For example, people have tried to say, well. Maybe the globe side, if, there, if the sun sets, will say, well, maybe the earth is not tilted or maybe it's not tilted at 23 and a half degrees. None of that works. If you don't tilt the earth, you don't have the 24 hour sun in the north uh, during the, you know, northern summer. And so I do feel like globe earthers would acknowledge that we don't live on a globe if the sun sets. Really? I, I don't think <laughs> I, I would assume that we did something wrong. Now, the model is the model. That's just how I feel. If, if something doesn't match, if your results don't match the results of every other scientist and expert in the world for the last hundreds of years, if you get different results, the first thing you should think, in my opinion, is where did I go wrong? Yeah, we can definitely look at that. The other thing to consider is the impossibility of a 24-hour sun on their model. That's a big one. And so... I think that the 24-hour sun in Antarctica 
might be in the top two, top three ways to falsify flat earth. My top two would be a flight over Antarctica. So you can go from anywhere, but maybe you leave the southern tip of South America, fly due south, go over the South Pole, and then you come up north to Australia. That to me would be absolute proof <clears throat> that we live on a globe and that you, the flat earth model can't work. Um, number two would be the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. So these are big deals uh, for falsifying flat earth. And uh, I think if we do f find a 24-hour sun, it's going to be pretty convincing. You know, I spoke with Flatzoid. He was on my show also a few months back. And one of my questions to him was, what would convince you that we're on a globe? And one of them was circumnavigation uh, north to south. Well, hold on a second. Yeah. Did, did, did you guys talk about the 24-hour sun at all? Unfortunately, we didn't. No, it was, it was prior to you even posting your first video. Okay, so let me talk about the circumnavigation thing because this is, this is confusing. We, you don't need to go from the North Pole south back to the North Pole to prove we live on a globe, okay? So I want to get rid of that right now. Uh, you don't have to do a full circumnavigation. All you'd have to do is what I said. Southern tip of South America, fly south, come up north to Australia. That's it. It's game over. Um, that is something that's only possible on a ball and is absolutely not possible on a flat earth model. On a flat earth model, you fly south of South America and just keep heading south. You will be getting further and further away from Australia. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I'm not super familiar with where Australia is on their map compared to South America, but... It Okay, so the, here, real quick, real quick. There's South America. Okay. On there, on the A map, there's Australia right there. So if you got on a flight here and headed this way towards Antarctica, you're getting further and further away from Australia. I see. Okay. okay. Cool. I want to talk about a few things that surprised you or that you didn't expect. Uh, did you ever imagine it would be this difficult to give away a free trip, an all-expense paid trip to Antarctica? to a flat earther did you imagine it would be this difficult never in a million years i thought it was going to be difficult to figure out who to give it to mm. now i do need to give credit where credit is due people on the globe side were telling me will they're not going to accept it i'm like what do you mean of course they will and it was just like pulling teeth so that is one thing i didn't expect the second thing i didn't expect was being called a pedophile and a human trafficker wow yeah so that's been happening a lot. Uh, I haven't caught all of them uh, because I can't. But just this week, a flat earther accused me of being either a pedophile or a human trafficker. It's literally insane the lengths they'll go to discredit me. And again, I want to tell these flat earthers, like, I'm not the enemy. Yes, there are people on the globe side that I think are rude, that I think are inconsiderate. And they, you know, just claim that they're right and you're wrong. They're smart. You're dumb. Uh, they understand you don't. Now, even in that situation, when someone's coming to you and they're just being rude and inconsiderate and, you know, in that situation, it's still not right to call them something like that, which I've heard happen before. <laughs> but in my situation, it's like, guys, what have I done that's so bad? All I've done is I've listened to you. I listened to you for two years. And after listening for two years, that's where I got the idea, listening to Dave Weiss, Eric Dubay, Dean Odell. I heard him live say it in the debate against Greg Locke in, in Tennessee. I kept hearing them say the 24-hour sun would refute flat earth. The 24-hour sun would prove the globe. Let's, they, Dean Odell said, let's go to Antarctica for a week and see what the sun does. You know, Jaron Campanella said that this would, you know, prove the globe and, and refute flat earth. And so it's like, guys, I listened to you. I gave you an honest go. Uh, and then I, that's how I came up with this idea. And then I offered to pay for it. It's like, guys, don't treat me like this. I'm not the enemy here. I want to talk to you a little bit about religious belief. I think the flat earther and religious person have a similar experience in some ways. So for example, they are both part of a community which has its benefits and it's a nice thing. However, I think 
it also makes it more difficult to walk away from, especially if you're seen as a leader within that community. And I would argue that flat earth content creators are leaders in their community. As a pastor, you're a leader within your church community. Now imagine over the past year or years, you've lost your faith. Do you feel that it would be more difficult to admit and walk away compared to a person who just attends church every Sunday and goes unnoticed for the most part? You know, this answer will surprise you, but I think it would be easier. And I'll tell you why. Being in a position of leadership, if I walked away from the faith, I couldn't continue to talk like I I still believe. I couldn't continue to teach lies and things like that. So I think it actually would be easy for me to be like, hey guys, sorry, I, I'm done. I'm tapping out. I'm walking away from this. I don't believe this anymore. I can't continue to be on this platform saying these things. How do you think the religious community would respond to that? Because the flat earth community does not respond well when people leave the flat earth. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of examples, but uh, yeah, it's tough. Something else that I was not, this is a, another answer to your question, something else I didn't anticipate seeing was how quickly flat earthers would turn on their own. Um, when someone like Jaron Campanella stated, hey guys, this is cool. Let's go to Antarctica. It's free. They're all just all of a sudden they're like, you're a shill, you're, you're fake, you're paid, you're paid opposition, controlled opposition. It's like, whoa, guys, what? What in the world? You guys have all been saying you want to go to Antarctica. Like I remember a guy, it's, it's in one of my videos because I was just collecting clips of flat earthers talking about Antarctica. Some guy called into Jaronism probably a year ago or more and was like, we got to go to Antarctica. And Jaron's like, I agree. Not a, one flat earther's ever been there. It's been nine years. And this guy was like, we're going. I don't care what it takes. We're going. And he's like, all right, let's figure it out. And so it's like, all of a sudden, we're going to go. And they're just, if, if, if Flat Earther says he's going to go, they're just like, oh, we don't trust you anymore. You're, you're, you work for the government. You work for NASA, whatever. It's crazy. I'm like, guys, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Like, this is not, not coherent. <laughs> this is not logical. Yeah. I spoke with Ray T five zeros as well. She's a former flat earther, and I asked her about her experience and how her relationships changed. And oh, she heard everything that she was never a flat earther, that she's a shill, that uh, she's AI. Wow. Yeah. I've been I've been accused of being AI, by the way. <laughs> but uh, circling back to the actual trip, the final experiment, you're going to be there for five days or five nights. Is that correct? Uh, yeah. So we're going to be there for five days, four nights, and again, maybe those four nights will actually be four days. <laughs> yeah, four, day, four long days. <laughs> Either way, that's a long time to be in the middle of nowhere staring at the sun. Well, actually, that's a poor choice of words. Hopefully, not, no one's, or everyone knows not to stare directly at the sun. I believe observe was the, the right word there. Four or five days observing the sun that's a long time. Do you have anything planned to pass the time or is there actually a lot to do there? Well, no, we, I don't. Um, I, I don't know what there is to do there. Uh, I know there's, you can hike, you can bike, you can, oh, they're going to take us on a scenic flight around Antarctica. So there's a lot of things that will, that will happen down there. But uh, my main goal is the sun documenting it as much as I possibly can. I obviously have to sleep as well, so we'll see how that goes. I wonder if Jaron and Austin will sleep in shifts. <laughs> Probably not. Hey, I, I think it'd be a great idea. I'm, I'm down. Lightning round. I have a couple of fun questions for you. Feel free to answer however you like, but a simple yes or no will probably suffice for most of them, or almost all of them. You ready? Mm -hmm. Will there be alcohol at the campsite? No idea. I don't drink, so I haven't asked. Do you believe in ghosts? No. Does Nathan Oakley believe the earth is flat? No idea. <laughs> Do you believe in psychics, particularly the kind that claim they can communicate with someone's dead relatives? No. How old is the earth? I think it's less than 10,000 years old. Which group wins in a fight? The 24 flat earthers or the 24 globers? No idea. 
<laughs> Which group wins in a math competition? I would say the globe side would win the math competition based on the debates I've seen. Does the Bible say the earth is flat? No. And finally, most important question of all, which is a superior pet, dogs or cats? Definitely dogs. Okay, cool. I have just two more questions for you, Will. The first one being, this is actually probably a better question for when it's all over, but can you reflect on the journey thus far and particularly if there's anything you would have done differently had you had the benefit of hindsight? Yeah, the number one thing I would have done differently is I would not have gone on Sean Griffin's show prior to announcing that I was behind the final experiment because he ended up asking me if I knew who was behind it. I hadn't announced that yet, and so I denied it, and they've made uh, a mountain out of that molehill. I'm actually aware of that. You made an apology video. It was just an unfortunate thing. If somehow the flat earth debate doesn't come to an end this December, what does your involvement with the flat earth look like going forward? I doubt I'll be involved, to be honest with you. <laughs> this uh, has taken up way too much of my time, way more than I anticipated. I wanted this to be a little bit of a side project while I did all my other passions and pursuits and you know, educating my kids. And so I just don't think I, I'm going to be able to continue. That's unfortunate. So the channel is just going to sit there. That's sad. But you brought a lot of excitement. And in some way, you may have brought, I know part of your intention was to bring the sides together. Maybe that will happen. Of course, the story is uh, not over. Since you mentioned the fact that it's taking up way more of your time, you have also said that it was costing you more money than you originally expected. I understand how it's taking up so much more time than you may have expected. But how is it costing more than you originally expected? Yeah, so my original budget that uh, I got approval from my wife on was to only have two people go to Antarctica. Actually, you know what? When I first came up with the idea, it was one, and it was only one flat earther. Then I was able to find ALE, who offered less expensive trips, and so then it was going to be two. One flat earther and one globe earther, and that globe earther was probably going to be me. Then I realized I'm a nobody, so I need to pay for a big-time globe earther and a big-time flat earther. Then it's three. Now we're adding Austin. Now it's four. <laughs> so when you said one, you were not even including yourself. You were going to send them alone. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so I, my, my budget has, has, is over by 200%. Wow. All right. So I guess that's going to do it, Will. Anything you'd like to share with the audience before we go? Yeah, if you're not familiar with The Final Experiment, check us out on YouTube. Just search The Final Experiment. We'll come right up. Uh, we post updates very frequently, weekly. And then our website is thefinalexperiment.com with dashes. The-final-experiment.com. A lot of cool information on there. FAQs, who's going to Antarctica, uh, scoreboard, live countdown timer for when we get to Antarctica. So yeah, check us out and... Uh, Hopefully you'll be watching us come December. I will, of course, have all the links for the viewers in the description below so they can find you and follow along. Well, I hope you have a great trip. Be safe. And yeah, I might have to ask you to come back on again in three months or so, if you're willing. Normally that'd be way too soon, but I have a feeling you're going to have plenty of things to talk about. Yeah, ha happy to come back sometime in January. This is the end. If you made it this far, do me a favor and hit those like and subscribe buttons and check out my other videos. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. As a Christian and a pastor, your faith is quite strong, I imagine. What would it take for you to give up your faith? Yeah, good question. And I, I, gotta, I gotta admit something here, which is that my, what I feel the most confident in is that there is a God. Um, that's hugely different <laughs> than the shape of the earth, which is gigantic and hard to understand and hard to get far enough away from to see what it looks like. But when it comes to God, um, I, can sum, I can sum up my belief and confidence in God in a few words, but then I'll explain what they mean. And the few words are... Uh, the impossibility of the contrary. So I cannot comprehend personally. If someone wants to convince me, I'll listen. I can't comprehend 
everything I see in this world without a God. And so this gets back to a talk on origins, right? And so I recently talked to a couple of atheists and they essentially told me that they believe that there was something eternal and uncreated, which I believe, but I believe that's God. They said they believe it was energy. So, so their God, I'll call it their God, uh, their, let's call it a lowercase g God is energy. Mine is a being. And so assuming this energy was always there, so eternal, uncreated, uh, I, I just don't see how that energy would spontaneously become matter, all the matter in the universe, and then through various processes, all of that matter in the universe would create life, and then the life would evolve to the point where you and I are having this conversation over a computer. It's just unfathomable to me.